What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports back again with another one. WBA regular champion in the lightweight and junior welterweight division, Javante Tank Davis goes back and forth with unified lightweight champion Teofimo Lopez. <laughs> He went in on him, man. I think he was responding to Teofimo making fun of his nickname, Tank. You know, basically, I guess insinuating that Tank ain't really found nobody to call himself Tank. Tank probably rolling up in third world countries or something. He ain't rolling up in no superpowers trying to start no wars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Basically, it's what Teofimo Lopez was saying. And Tank caught wind of that and basically went in on Teofimo Lopez. Basically said, look here, man, ain't you going on your eighth reschedule of your fight with George Cambosos? Face it, Teofimo, you ain't no ticket seller. You ain't no draw. Ain't sold one ticket. That's why they keep moving your dates. I tell you what, man, I'm going to help you out. That's what <laughs> Javante said. Let me, let me help you out, brother. I'm going to put you on my undercard. And we're going we gonna to broadcast it on Facebook Live, man, so we can, so you can get your fight off. <laughs> Basically what he said. Then he hashtag makeover. Not takeover, but makeover. Basically, you ain't nothing but a makeover. Keep making over these dates. Going on your eighth date <laughs> is what uh, Teofima Lopez. Man, that's what uh, Giovante Tank Davis was saying about Teofima Lopez in his upcoming fight with IBF mandatory contender George Cambosos. <laughs> It's crazy, man. But uh, with that being said, man, let's talk about Javante's next fight. You know, I've been hearing rumblings. I've been hearing rumors that his next fight will be against Roly Romero, who I think was the interim champion at 135 pounds via the WBA. But the WBA has found the error of its ways, and they're getting rid of all these interim belts and these... Hopefully getting rid of these regular belts too. They're gonna have one champion per division. They're gonna have all these multiple belts, man. It was ridiculous how many belts they had. I think they even had like a WBA gold belt at one time. They had an interim, they had a WBA gold, they had a WBA regular, then they had a WBA super, man. It was absolutely out of hand with what the WBA was doing. But I think due to the fact that they was, you know, with that Fox, Michael Fox. In the fight he fought, which that was a horrendous scorecard by that lady judge, man. I think once that uh, happened, you know, they was going, they was thinking about really, really uh, making the WBA basically a minor league belt, man. You know, basically making the WBA like a NABF belt was back in the day. You know, basically making the they're gonna make the WBA like the IBO belt, man. It wasn't gonna be mentioned with the top belts in the sport of boxing, you know, the WBO and the WBC and the IBF. So the WBA said, uh-oh, we better clean up our act. And one thing that they're doing is uh, they're limiting uh, all those belts per division. And that's a good thing in the sport of boxing. Too many champions, man. Too many people, too many mediocre fighters call themselves champions. I ain't going to say mediocre fighter, but too too many guys that ain't the best in their weight class call themselves champions. Only people that should be calling themselves champions are the best at their weight class. At beating all the top people at that weight class and proving to be the best fighter in that weight class. We don't want no kind of debate. Well, well who's the best in this uh, 135 pound? Is it Teofimo Lopez who got the Super WBA, or is it Javante Tank Davis who got 24 knockouts and 25 fights and has is, 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 uh, put on a press for, for performance uh, since he came onto the scene knocking out top nine, top name fighters like Leo Santa Cruz and Mario Barrios? Who is the top dog? at 135 pounds. Even though Leo wasn't at 135 pounds, neither was neither was Mario Barrios. But you catch my drift as far as let's get rid of these uh, multiple belts per division. What need to happen is Teofimo Lopez need to fight Javante Tank Davis. The one of that can truly say they're the best at 135 pounds. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. But again, let's get back to the Javante Tank Davis' his next opponent. Who is, who is he going to fight next? Now, according to many people, and they going by what a B-side fighter say, a guy that's not even an A-side in the fight with Javante Tank Davis, that being 
Roley Romero. You know, people that took what Roley said and ran with it. Oh, Javante Tank Davis is fighting Roley in December. According to who? According to Roley? When is everybody going to learn the sport of boxing, man? Until the A-side announced the fight, the fight ain't happening. We went down this same thing with Floyd Mayweather numerous times when he was about to uh, fight his next opponent. B-side come out there, oh, man, I'm fighting Floyd next. Oh, I'm fighting Floyd next. And what turned out to be the uh, the real is, man, even when you ain't fighting no Floyd next, or the fight is not done just because you said it was done. It's going to be done when Floyd get on his social media page and announce that the fight is done. That's what when the fight's done. We went down the same rabbit hole with Mikey Garcia and Manny Pacquiao. Mikey Garcia doing an interview on Fight Hype basically saying that, oh man, I'm fighting Manny Pacquiao next. I'm fighting him in the summertime. And that fight did not come to fruition. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires, man. But <laughs> you can't keep going down this rabbit hole, man. Until Javante Tank Davis get on his social media platform and announce the fight, then that's when I'm gonna believe the fight's done. I am not going off what Roley say. Of course, Roley wants the Javante Tank Davis fight. They're up under the Mayweather promotion. It's an easy fight to make. It's gonna be his highest payday. You know, he didn't want no part of Devin the Dream Haney, basically saying he's Devin the Dream Haney's biological father. He was calling out Devin Haney, saying that Devin Haney is probably the preferable fight over Javante Tank Davis because he wanted to shut up Devin the Dream Haney and his father, Bill Haney. But then his tune quickly changed and now he's saying that he's got the Javante Tank Davis's fight lined up. So we will see what happens. We will see what transpires. But until the A-side says the fight's going down, don't believe it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Do not believe that. We've seen on multiple differences, different, different instances where the B-side didn't announce fights that it was done and then it wasn't done at the time. And then the fight didn't even come to fruition when the B-side said the fight was coming to fruition. Prime example is uh, Mikey Garcia saying he had to fight with Mikey, uh, with Manny Pacquiao. It turns out Manny Pacquiao was uh, instead going to fight Earl the True Spence. Earl the True Spence suffered an eye injury. And then Jordanus Ukas, who, who was the co-main event, stepped up to the plate and fought Manny Pacquiao. Mikey Garcia was just talking, just hoping, just uh, basically throwing it out there, trying to speak into existence. But it did not go down like that. And y'all falling, falling for the same banana in the tailpipe, falling for the same okie doke, believing what Roley said, saying he got the fight lined up with Javante Tank Davis. And Javante Tank Davis have a came out on his uh, social media page and confirmed what Roley said. So we will see what happens. We will see what transpires. Now, some of the opponents that could be mentioned, now I do agree Roley is probably the front runner, but it's far from being a done deal. Some other guys that could get the fight, Tevin Farmer, they got a real beef going back four or five years, probably three, I ain't gonna say five years, around about four years, they had a beef going on. Both of those guys were get, going head up, getting into altercations at different uh, boxing events and stuff like that. That fight could be revisited. Even though Tevin Palmer last fight was a decision lost to Jojo Diaz. Ooh, yeah! He's still uh, in that fight with Javante Tank Davis. It would be a very intriguing opponent. And the press conference would be epic and both guys would talk trash and, uh, <laughs> and go back and forth like they did on multiple occasions four years ago. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. Another opponent could be Gary Russell, AKA Mr. Gary Russell. They could put that fight on the East Coast, even though the East Coast ain't been putting on too many fights due to COVID-19. Maybe they might be uh, getting close as we get toward the end of 2021 as putting on big time fights. Now I've seen some fights that they put on in the Prudential Center over there in Newark, New Jersey. They, they could put that fight over there. As uh, they had a card over there with Michael Coffey as he got upset over there in, uh, in the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. That fight was on Fox. Now, that would be a perfect venue for Javante Tank Davis versus Gary Russell Jr. For both guys from the East Coast. They would sell out their arena, put it on Showtime pay-per-view, and they, I think that fight would do great, great numbers. That's another opponent that he possibly could look at. Now, if he wants to go up to 147, he might not be able to go up to 147 due to the fact he got belts at 135 and 140. The WBA is really putting their foot down on making these guys uh, fight and get rid of these belts. So maybe they might mandate that he fight Teofimo Lopez at 135 or maybe fight Josh Taylor at 140. If that's not the case, they might uh, he might want to fight the highest rank available opponent in each one of those weight class that he could choose from. 
lightweight or junior welterweight. But I don't, from what I'm looking at, I've been looking at those uh, rankings. He don't have any uh, appealing name that's going to help draw and help uh, get people excited about uh, Showtime pay-per-view fight in December. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. Now Keith Thurman was prominently mentioned about a month ago, but he is too expensive of an opponent for Javante Tank Davis. Javante Tank Davis will be the A-side. This will be his show. So the B-side probably can't pay the B-side no more than probably a million dollars. That's what Leo Santa Cruz made. I think he made 1.3 and he actually was the A-side. Javante was the B-side. But Mario Bar Barrios was 500000 So they probably want to keep that somewhere between 500000 and $1 million for the B-side opponent for Javante Tank Davis. So that's not going to work out for Keith One Time Thurman as he's uh, accustomed to making at least $3 million, you know, in excess per fight. He made two and a half for fighting Pacquiao. But when it was all said and done, he walked home, walked away with $5 million in the Manny Pacquiao fight. That two and a half million was just a guaranteed minimum. At the end of the day, he made five million dollars. So I don't think he would be willing to go down from five million to, you know, maybe a one million dollar guarantee, and then maybe when it's all said and done, you walk away with two million. I don't think he would be willing to take that type of cut. So I think he's a little bit too expensive. With that being said, that leaves Roland Romero. Even Mr. Gary Russell might be a little bit too expensive, but I think Gary might take a million. You might get Gary for a million with, with a, maybe to get some money on the back end of the pay per view. Because he'll be bringing some uh, people from the D.C. area, so you might be able to get him. So I'm thinking it's either Roley Romero, Gary Russell, or Tevin Farmer. If he goes up to 147, maybe you're looking at maybe Abel Reino, Ramos. He'll be fit. He'll fit the bill for you know a Latino fighter. As uh, that's the blueprint. That's the Mayweather blueprint to fight the Latino fighter, get the Latino fan base to uh, buy your pay-per-view. Abel Ramos, or maybe a Jose Cito Lopez could be a possible opponent. Maybe a dog course, a Robert Ghost Guerrero, who's done a successful pay-per-view before in Mayweather Jr. Those are some of the possible opponents for Javante Tank Davis. So we will see what happens, and we will see what transpires. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section about what Javante Tank Davis is going to do in his next fight. Who is he going to fight? Do you believe it's going to indeed be Roley Romero? Or do you believe, like I believe, until Javante announces the A-side, everything else is speculation. Let me know your thoughts and subscribe to JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend. And I holla.